Okay, today what we're going to be doing is converting standard form to vertex form. All right, standard form, talked about it yesterday, AX squared plus BX plus C. Vertex form, we talked about that on Monday, A times X minus H squared plus K. And today you're going to be given equations in standard form and you're going to be asked to write them in vertex form. Because when they're in vertex form, they're a heck of a lot easier to graph or to recognize their graph um, than they are in standard form. So we're going to write each function in vertex form. So our first function is y equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 7. And the first thing that we're going to do, if, if you look at standard form, all right, it's got an A value, a B value, and a C value. And if you look at vertex form, it has this A value, and then it has an H and a K. Well, when an equation is in vertex form, the opposite of H is your X, and K is your Y. So if you know A and you know the vertex, you can write it in vertex form, right? So this equation right here has an A value of 2. So that's the first thing you need. Well, the second thing you need is the vertex. So we take B, which is equal to 10, and we take C, which is equal to 7. And yesterday we said that when an equation is in standard form, that our x at the vertex is equal to the opposite of b divided by 2a. So we're going to find that value. We're going to find x at the vertex. All right. So x at the vertex is equal to the opposite of b, which is 10, over 2 times a, and your a is 2. So this is equal to negative 10 over 4. And negative 10 over 4 is what? Negative 2.5. So look, there's your x value at the vertex. And then when you did this yesterday, to find your y value at the vertex, you took your you took your x value at the vertex and you substituted it. So the second step here to find this y value at the vertex is to substitute. So we're going to take y, make it equal to 2 times negative 2.5 squared plus 10 times 2.5 plus 7. Yep, you know what? And when I was doing these yesterday, every time I did this, I made that same mistake. I kept forgetting to substitute a negative in the second time that I substituted, and I don't know why. Thank you. This right here has got to be the negative 2.5 as well. Now, you're going to get problems today where 
you know, X is a fraction fraction, not something you can turn into a decimal. So look, take these calculators, and when you get to this step, if you type it in just the way it is right there, left to right, that's all you got to do is type it in. Just be careful when you type it in. All right? So let's type this in. It's going to go 2 times. You got to go 2.5 negative, and you got to push X squared. And then plus 10 times 2.5 negative plus 7, and you hit equals. And what did you get? What did you get? Negative 11.45? I got negative 5.5. .5. All right, let's do this again. Do it with me. You ready? 2 times 2.5 negative x squared. Got that? You got 6.25 on your screen? Good. Plus 10 times 2.5 negative again. Plus 7. You got it that time? Yeah. I bet what happened is you forgot to, when you typed in this 2.5, since it's negative, you got to put the negative sign in after the number. You probably forgot it. So your y value at the vertex is negative 5.5. So now you've got your a, and you've got the coordinates at the vertex. So in vertex form, y is equal to a, which is 2, times x. Now it's x, and then the opposite of your x goes in there. So this goes positive 2.5. Right parenthesis, squared, and then your y value at the vertex exactly as it is. So this is minus 5.5. There's your equation in vertex form. So identify your ABC, find your X at the vertex the way you did yesterday, substitute that X value into the equation and get your Y at the vertex. Once you have your A and your vertex, you can substitute everything back into vertex form. All right, so we're going to do one more of those, and then I'm going to give you some practice for today. That's all we're doing this week. So we're going to write this equation in vertex form. Let's say that we got the function of x equal to negative x squared plus 4x minus 5. Our a value is equal to negative 1. Our B is equal to 4, and our C is equal to negative 5. Our X at the vertex, X at the vertex is equal to the opposite of B over 2A. So negative sign, the value of B, which is 4, divided by 2 times A, which is negative 1. Now, this negative in the denominator is going to make this whole fraction negative. And the negative of a negative is a positive. So be careful here. All right, you get negative 4 divided by negative 2, which is the negative of negative 2, which equals 2. So your x at the vertex is 2. Substitute to find your y at the vertex. So our. Now, be careful here. All right, this negative sign is the same as a negative 1 times x squared. 
okay? This isn't negative two squared. This is the negative of or the opposite of or negative one times two squared plus four times two minus five. To make it work in your calculator, you may have to do some experimenting, but if you just treat this like a negative one, which it is, I think you'll be okay because you could type one negative times two x squared plus four times two minus five hit equals. What do you get? Good, me too. So our y at the vertex is negative 1. So our function of x in vertex form is equal to negative x minus 2 squared minus 1. Simple enough, All right? Identify your A, B, and C. Find the coordinates of the vertex. Substitute back into vertex form. All right, beautiful. All right, so if there's no practice, if there's no practice, if there's no questions, your practice for today is going to be on page 206. Twenty six to thirty one. And all those answers are down there on the bottom of that page for you to check. And look, when you get to one of them really kind of crazy fraction problems, just deal with the fractions. Let your calculator deal with the fractions. Just keep working them until you get them correct. All right. Keep working them until you get them correct. If you, if you got a question about how to enter something into the calculator, ask me. These are going in the basket. Or you're emailing me a picture. That's all I've got for you today. If you are an e-learner and you don't have any questions, you're excused to get the assignment completed and send me a picture of it.